There are three characters in Edward Albee's Three Tall Women, um, and in the script, they're, they're not given any names. They're just known by these letters. There's A, who is 91 or 92 years old. There's B, who is 52 years old. And there is C, who's 26 years old. And at the beginning of the play, they appear to be three different women from three different generations. But as the play goes on, there's a switch where you begin to realize that these are not three separate women. These are, in fact, the same woman at different periods of her life. Albie seems to have a really excellent ear for describing the encroaching senility that A is experiencing and B and C's reaction to it. What makes these scenes become so electric and work so well? Albie is a kind of playwright who is an incredible observer of human interaction. And I think that he sees all human interactions as a sort of game where there are winners and losers. So every character in all his plays are always trying to get sort of the upper hand and win the conversation. Um, and that makes the play sound very dark with really cynical characters, which they are. They are dark plays for the most part, but they're also incredibly funny. And they wouldn't be so funny if they weren't also saying something really true about the way we humans interact with each other. Um, and so I think that is what makes these scenes so electric in the play, is that sort of antagonism between all the three characters, which is riveting and also really humorous. At the same time, you do get a sympathetic side of Albie in this play. And I think it comes in in the portrayal of this character A on her deathbed, in which he is so closely observing her state of mind. Um, even though in a lot of the play, you get the feeling that she is sort of an awful, bitter woman, by the end of the play, I think most people end up really liking her and identifying with her. And I think that's a testament to Albie's talent, that he can make that switch on us. A's son comes home during this play, and their relationship is clearly estranged. They try to get back together. She's had a stroke. It's not quite clear how their relationship goes. But is this really Edward Albee and his relationship with his own mother? Unquestionably, this play is about Edward Albee's mother. And Albee has gone on record for saying as much. Um, his mother was actually his adoptive mother. Um, he was adopted at a very young age. Um, and the two of them had a contentious relationship uh, throughout their whole shared lives together. And the character of that mother appears in a lot of different plays of his. He was working through their relationship throughout his entire career, I think. Um, and he wrote this play shortly after she finally passed away in the early 90s. Um, and he describes it definitely as a working through of saying goodbye to his mother. And he said he just started writing it. And it became, I think, a very specific portrait of his mother. It's not a biographical play, but the character of that woman, I think, is Albie's mother. And I think the fact that he was able to paint her, actually, in the end, in such a sympathetic light, almost with a sort of admiration, I think, by the end, I think that really says something about the depth and the complication of his relationship with her. Where does this Edward Albee play fit into his body of work? Well, this play came out in uh, 1994. 1994 is when it had its New York premiere. And it followed a period in Edward Albee's career when he had been sort of written off by theater critics. He'd had amazingly successful hits in the 60s and 70s with Zoo Story, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Delicate Balance, Seascape. Um, but a lot of critics thought that he didn't have another great play in him anymore. And so Three Tall Women caught a lot of critics by surprise. And it was really his re-entrance into the American theater scene. And the play did win the 1994 Pulitzer Prize for Drama eventually. Thank you. Thank you.